stupid, stupid, stupid! I suddenly became human again. What the fuck? It's gotta be the heavenly fire. They give me the greatest gift I could ever ask for. You think this is a gift? So all downloaders get cured whether they like it or not. What the fuck? This is why I hate it out the tree! Nobody likes this stupid bitch. We have to get Simon out of there. Fuck. I just found out that I was helping Alter Tree create a weapon of mass destruction against Downworlders. Oh, yeah! Alder Trees. Victor, Alder Tree. Oh, team up. Me in. Oh! He wants to dump heavenly fire in the water supply and turn every Downworlder into a mundane against their will. I like this girl. I knew I, I liked you. It was something about your face. So why? No, you're human now, buddy. He's not getting away with this. Send him back oh my prison. god, it's a nice little team. We need to destroy this alive heavenly fire now. A nice little dream team. Oh, Simon, just fuck him up. You can do it. You're speedy, you Gonzalez, over here. Okay, how do we do that? I'll distract him. What are you doing? Go. Sir! Oh! What? The yeah, Simon, fuck him up! Oh. Oh my god! Yes! Raphael's still fucking him up! Even though he's human! Go beat your ass! Oh, dude, Simon? I needed that. I needed some more violence. I love when Simon fucks him up. I'll send you the coordinates. Love that. I love that. I got goosebumps. Every time someone does anything, I'll goodbye. Isabel, you have nice legs. Sorry. Oh my god, don't fuck with Simon. What are you gonna learn? Oh! Wait, was that Simon? That was fucking dude. He's a beast. He's human and he's a beast. I might have lost my strength. I'll never lose my will to fight. Yeah. I can't let you do this. He's so. Don't touch her. You're a little bitch. Look at that little pussy. By the order of Consul Hollow, you're under arrest. Yeah. Are you mad, bro? Feels bad, man. Alright, well, if I'm no longer needed here, there's somewhere I need to be. He has to propose to his husband! Oh my god, soon I, I can actually say husband. I'm gonna cry. But something's gonna go wrong, right? I'm with you. Fuck, I'm not. No. I don't. Nothing could go wrong. We have like three minutes left or something like that. Can you just let it end on a happy note? In Come a on. second, I was worried you weren't gonna make it out. Oh my Me god, too. he always makes it out. Thankfully, I got, I got lucky. No, you just Luck had nothing to do with it. You're just what strong. you did today, putting your life on the line for the people you care about. Yeah. It's pretty badass. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say, man. He's a badass. I love him. We found a way to destroy the twinning rune. <laughs> won't be down here much longer. You'll be dead. It's not possible. It's more than possible. It's inevitable. <laughs> yeah. Are you mad? Are you mad? You won't do it. I have so much more to share with you. I'm oh. a brother. Clary, don't let them do this. Clary! Why did they have to make us sympathize Clary, with him? Clary! Oh my god, he Please looks like This is what makes it so hard, because we see why he's like that. Oh my god! Oh my god, I'm gonna cry! I'm not ready, something's gonna go wrong. Fuck me, fuck me, fuck me, I'm gonna kill myself. Where the fuck is Magnus? He's never not on time. Oh my god. Oh. Oh. You know, I really love this pre-war architecture. It is just gorgeous, just like you. <laughs> what? Is he drunk? He's Are drunk. You drinking? Well, apparently I lost my warlock tolerance for booze and. Mm. Oh my fucking god, this ruined. He's not gonna propose now. A lot. Oh my god! Are you judging me? No, I'm just concerned. I've never seen you like this. Oh no, neither have I. Did something happen? Oh, you didn't hear? I lost my magic. Twice! <laughs> 
And I'm just coming to terms with how useless I am without it. Magnus, you're not useless. Oh, easy for you to say. You're at the top of your game with an institute of shadow hunters at your beck and call. Me? Well, oh. I'm just a has-been warlock who isn't good for anything except comic relief and drinking. Mm. Oh my but hey, god. I'm on Monday now, right? Just like you've always wanted. Oh, fuck. All I've ever wanted is for you to be happy. Well, I'm not. Oh my god. What am I doing? You put this beautiful night together and I'm picking a fight. Yeah. It's pathetic. Okay. Just, you can't go through with it now. You're going through a hard time. Yeah. Please, He's such, so understanding. Don't make me pretend this is just a phase. Because it's not. And it just takes time. What I'm feeling now... It may never pass. No, it's gonna pass. As long as I live. You're gonna be happy again. You lost a big part of you. I should go. I probably killed both our happy times. Stop it. No. Stop. Listen. I just, I, I love you. Can you just, I just want to help. I know you do. You can't. Listen. You can't. Alex, stop. stop. Let me go, please. You stop. can't help me. Listen, 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 for a second. Listen. You stop. Can't. Let me be here with you. Alex. Please. please. Oh my god. I thought we were getting to fist fight that whole shit. Oh my god. Magnus. Oh my god, I've never seen Magnus like that. I never thought in a million years I'd see Magnus like that. Oh my god. That didn't go the way I thought. I mean, it was better. I thought something shitty, like really shitty would happen. I'm glad it was just a little something like that, but fuck. Uh, I'm just glad he didn't die. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about that. Alrighty guys, so that was season three, episode seventeen of Shadowhunters. A really, really good episode. Uh, big like turnaround. Uh, it started off really happy, thinking this is gonna go great. A lot of stuff happened. I'm. I thought it was a good conflict there. Uh, with the whole the whole episode, I'm saying mainly mainly Malik. I'm talking about there, that was a good conflict with them. Uh, it's sad. But, like I'm, I'd rather be that than fucking Magnus dying or something. I thought I thought something like that was gonna happen. But I'm glad it didn't. Uh, so that was a really good episode. Let's go through it from beginning to end. I go through the important stuff. Let's first start off with the beginning. Absolutely loved the beginning part, the tone of it. Just amazing. A great scene. Alec getting ready in the morning. You can see, you can see he's got like his, just he's got his feelings up. He, he's in a good mood. He just decided he's going to propose to his boyfriend. Uh, so he's like in a good mood. He's getting up ready for the day. He has this in his head the whole time. He's like nervous. You can tell he's just like a bunch of emotions going through him. You see Magnus in bed again, just kind of like getting through it. You know, he's mundane now, so he's just like living the normal mundane life. Uh, they're apartment shopping, like that type of stuff. Um, and then he says, I'll meet you later tonight for dinner, which is obviously what he's going to propose. So you see him throughout the episode, uh, Alec kind of just like putting together the proposal, like, get the flowers ready, blah, 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 and then he has, like, this dinner thing ready, so that's cool, um, now, okay, we're gonna leave that and come back to, to that near the end of the episode, because that, we kind of, like, had the beginning part, then the rest of the episode wasn't really much of them, and then the end, we got back to them, which I thought was, I guess it's cool, because maybe we're gonna get a whole de dedicated episode to them at some point, um, uh, Simon and Izzy, Izzy's plan so their plan basically was to get Simon into the prison where they were keeping the, the fire, the heavenly fire, get him in there and get him to steal the fire, like find it somehow undercover with a fake name, gets in there. He's Raphael's in there, which I was like, whoa, like, I thought we were done with Raphael, but he was in there. So we got to see some Raphael, which I loved this episode. I absolutely loved seeing Raphael. I thought it was great, great addition to the episode. Um, and see, they, they're like doing these experiments on vampires and, and like dime worlders in general. And we see that they actually are turning every fucking dime worlder human. And that was Aldridge's plan. Fuck Aldridge. I forgot he existed, but he came back. And that was his plan to basically get rid of old dime worlders, uh, kind of cut them off from, from continuing to, to exist and breed. Like he just wants them done with. He wants the world a better, like a better place in his opinion. But yeah, so, um, he's making everyone human. He makes Raphael human, which Raphael actually liked. That's what Raphael, Raphael wanted. He's lived too long. He's watched too many of his loved ones die. So, like, that was a good thing for him. 
So, Raphael is human now. I'm assuming he's going to be back in the show. I, 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 I think they couldn't have locked him up after that. Like, we didn't get to see what happened with him afterwards. But I'm pretty sure they didn't lock him back up. Um, so, he's human now. So, I don't think they can lock him back up. Because he's human now. So, yeah, that happened. Uh, we got to see some great action scenes with Simon and Raphael and that girl, Helen. Uh, just, like, destroying those guards. Um, the Helen character seems pretty cool. She had a little interaction with that line. Uh, not sure if that, if this character's gonna go anywhere. I don't know if we have time for that. But, very cool, like, action scenes there. He gets the, uh, the fire, the heavenly fire. And they kind of just destroy everything in there so they can't continue their stupid plan with all the tree. All the tree's locked up now. And they get the heavenly fire for Clary. Now, Let's get to Clary and Jonathan. We ha we now can separate them. So like they're they're done. Like we got we're gonna just take the runes off, separate them, and then I'm assuming kill Jonathan or lock him up uh, in the prison. So there, that's done. That's well, we haven't done it yet, but that's the plan. Is that we can now separate them. So we got Clary now. We should, we're good. We got her solved. Now throughout this episode, we see a lot of. Jonathan's backstory and I really enjoyed that I really enjoyed seeing that because it made us sympathize with him right before we kind of have to put him in a bad position and and tr like treat him like a monster it makes us sympathize with him so that when when we do this to him when we treat him like a monster we're gonna have a it's going to make us feel a certain way. We're going to feel for him. And that's, like, something I didn't think I would feel. But, like, seeing how his mother kind of just treated him like shit. He had no one else. His mother treated him like shit. She emotionally abused him, said no one would love her. No one would love him the way she did. No one would ever come for him. Nothing. His amount of life would pretty much amount to nothing besides her. So he thought, like, that was the best treatment I could get is my mom. He That was his idea of what he should be getting. And... Back when he found out Clary was alive and he had a sister, I guess it kind of just put this idea in his head, like, she was wrong. Someone's out there for me. Like, that is, that must be fate, like, for me to meet my sister and, like, she'll love me because she's my sister. Like, that's what he thinks. But, um, he's incorrect. Uh, and he has this, like, warped idea of love. He doesn't know how to separate love between, I said it's more platonic, romantic, like, family love. He doesn't understand how to do that. So, to him, it's just love, like... Whatever he sees, like kissing, stuff like that stuff's normal because that's what his mom taught him. He has a very deranged upbringing, so it makes him very deranged as a person. Uh, so he is just like, it makes you feel really bad for him. And then you, you see Clary uh, going back to her drawing. She realizes that, that she knew this was happening growing up subconsciously. She had dreams and drawings of it. And to her, now she's feeling guilty. She's feeling like it's her fault um, and she could have saved him. But like, at this point, I think this is the point where we have to realize he's too far gone. So I'm excited to see where that goes. Um, and how we're gonna like how his final scenes are gonna be, and how this is gonna end, and how it's gonna affect everyone. I'm excited for that. Uh, but now let's get to the goods, the final part of the episode. Not the goods, sorry, the bads. Uh, fuck me, bro. Alec has this all set up, ready to propose. He's hyped. Uh, but we saw a little moment earlier where Al Magnus was getting ready, looking in the mirror, and he saw gray hair. And I guess that kind of triggered something in him. And and, and he shows up to the dinner late, drunk in a horrible state, kind of just, like, talking, like, picking a fight with Alex, saying, like, like I'm out to nothing, this is, like, kind of blaming it on him, implying that it's his fault, saying, like, this is what you wanted, isn't it? And kind of just, like, picking a fight where there, there doesn't have to be one because of his his little depression that is not little, sorry, his depression that is slipping, and he's lost something big in his life. He's lost a big part of him, so he's going into this, this depression, this bad way of thinking, and, and obviously this kind of, like, ruined the mood a little bit, ruined Alex's plans. I guess Alec is now realizing, like, I, a marriage proposal can't fix Magnus. Like, this won't fix him. Sure, he wanted to, but maybe that wasn't the exact right time. Maybe they have to fix, they have to get get to a better a better position, or get Magnus to a better position before he can commit his life to someone else. Because right now, Magnus doesn't like himself very much. So for him in order to, like, for him to commit his life to, to Alec, he must have to get into a little bit of a better spot. So... Um, yeah, and then you see Magnus break down, he's crying in his arms, I thought they were getting into a fist fight or something, I thought that's what, that was gonna be the end of the episode, where he, like, punches him or something, because he's trying to get out, and Alec wouldn't let him, but it turns out they just had, like, uh, uh, Magnus was just kind of breaking down, trying to leave, and Alec just kind of held him there, comforted him, didn't let him leave, said, let me be here with you, and he held him while he cried, and that was so heartbreaking, I've never seen Magnus break down like that, no one has, seeing Magnus, like, actually cry and break down, like a baby. It was heartbreaking. Magnus is usually so strong. This is the biggest change of 
of pace for any character we've had. Man, it's uh, it's emotional to watch. So uh, the wedding proposal was ruined, but I'm I'm assuming we're gonna get back into it. I hope we get back into it. I hope the proposal ends up happening at some point. We have a few episodes left, so I'm I'm hoping we do get this proposal. But yeah, man. Um, again, just seeing how everything has affected Magnus and how this is a really dynamic situation that we have to play with safely and we have to just take it slow. So I'm excited to see where that whole thing goes. I think they're at a point where the relationship is so strong that they have to be patient with each other. So. Uh, really emotional to see Magnus in that position and see how it affects both of them. But I was excited for them to get to for him to propose. I thought it was going to be great, a great situation. I thought it was going to go perfectly, but I, I guess not. So I guess we got to wait to see what happens with that. So I'm excited to see what happens with Malik when that happens, if it happens, whatever. Uh, Magnus and Izzy, we had some a little bit of development there with them at the end. I want to see what happens with Raphael if he comes back out, if he's, if he's just gone. I'm very very excited to see what happens with. Uh, Clary and Jonathan and their rune. What is happening with them? Are they are they gonna actually end up getting rid of it? How are we gonna deal with the whole Jonathan situation? I'm excited. Anyways, guys, yeah, amazing episode. Honestly, great. I enjoyed. That was very entertaining throughout the whole thing. I loved it. Uh, great focuses. It was really done really well. Uh, but yeah, anyways, guys. So hopefully you did enjoy that. Drop a like if you guys did subscribe to the channel if you guys are brand new. Follow me on Twitter, guys. I'm at Snapchat. All the good stuff is in the description below. If you want to watch my full extended reaction to this over an hour long. Link will be in the description over on Patreon in the $4 tier. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys very, very soon for episode 18.